biggest chocolate makers are in the U.S. and Europe, which is where most of the money goes, too. Chocolate's story is certainly not all sweet. There are continuing issues of trafficking children to work on plantations for little or no pay, an issue that touches even U.S. consumers. A new lawsuit alleges Customs and Border Protection ignored evidence that child labor was involved in harvesting cocoa from major U.S. candy makers. The agency told us it cannot comment on pending litigation. Today, the Department of Labor estimates that one and a half million children still work illegally on cocoa plantations. We visited cocoa country to see where the problems start and to understand some possible solutions. Elon's Kanubi cracks open the pods to extract a sweet, slimy bean, which at this stage has a flavor like lychee fruit. Can you taste them? I saw you eating a few of them. Yeah. Earlier. <laughs> While there are perks, high pay is not among them. Do you feel like you make enough money to have a decent living? No. The average cocoa farmer in Ghana earns less than $2 a day and it's labor-intensive work. Once the cocoa is collected, it's left to ferment under banana leaves for about seven days. Then it's laid out in the sun to dry. Stephen Ashia has been farming cocoa for 14 years and says he barely breaks even. At the end, you'll buy chocolate bars? No, well, mostly I don't buy chocolates. And when you have, it is better I use it to buy heavy food rather than buy chocolate that cannot fill my belly to come in wet. You don't make enough money to afford yeah, chocolate. Yeah, yeah. That's a bitter reality Dutch chocolate maker Tony's Chocolonely is confronting. Nobody needs chocolate. And to me, it's really unacceptable that in something that's a luxury, that's a gift, that people accept that there's extreme poverty at the beginning of the supply chain. All Schumacher's led sustainability programs for Tony's Chocolonely until last month. The company's name nods to its lonely place in this fight against exploitation. The two main problems are illegal labor and national deforestation, and both of them are driven by poverty. What our program aims to do is help farmers enable uh, earn a living income, and uh, with that, we take away the root cause of the issues in cocoa. They took us to see schools they help support, a common way many big chocolate companies claim to be giving back. But Schumacher's underlined that this, what he called charity, is not enough. Boosting real incomes is essential. He says the price most chocolate companies are paying for raw cocoa here, a price set by the government, is too low compared to what farmers need to live. We calculate how big the gap is between the government set price and the living income price, and we pay that gap as an extra premium. For the spring harvest, the premium was about $63 higher than what's set by the government, meaning Tony's paid almost double for each bag of beans. Tony's also implemented a tracing system to follow the beans through their supply chain. Tifola's Abaca monitors this step. So knowing that you are responsible for whatever happens to your beans, it will help you to do the right thing. Can you calculate how many chocolate bars you can make from a, a bag like this of cocoa? Yeah, that's a good question. It really depends on the type of chocolate. So a, a dark chocolate bar would contain more cocoa than a milk chocolate bar. So on average, a Tony's bar is three to 500 bars from one bag. Three to 500 bars. But farmers were getting just $80 for each of these bags of cocoa. We're almost done with that. And it's still only a small fraction of the legal price. There's no chocolate sort of company will go bankrupt on that. But it will mean the whole world of, of a difference for cocoa bars. Papa is a fully dry farmer. There's a lot of color. You start smelling the chocolate. Yeah. We met Gifty Narki drying cocoa beans for one of the farmer cooperatives selling to Tony's. My parents were doing it. Ah. Yeah. How about your grandparents? They too. Wow. Yeah. How about their parents? <laughs> so your great great parents, your grandparents, yeah, your parents, cocoa all cocoa farmers, yeah. and now you. Yes. She told us she used some of the extra money Tony's pays to make a capital investment. She needs a second job. At first, I don't have machines to sweep. But now I have just machines. 
because you've got extra money in, from Tony's? Yes. Working through these cooperatives, Tony's tries to build the relationships needed to identify and root out problems. Right on the bar it says, we exist to end modern slavery and illegal child labor in the chocolate industry. It's a goal, but not a guarantee. You cannot do this on our own. We have to develop a model that is replicable and stable for all other chocolate companies that do the same as we do. But if I buy this piece of chocolate, can you guarantee that there's not child labor involved? So if you buy chocolate from Dr. Colony, then you know that we search for child labor. Search, but can't promise that it's not part of the chain itself. And we find child labor. We also transparent about the child labor data that we find. But it's good that we find it because it's just a start. It's so good. Next season of Ghanaian government is raising the price of cocoa with part of an effort to combat smuggling, illegal gold mining on cocoa plantations, and of course, child labor. At 57 Chocolate, Kimberly Addison is trying her own way to keep more profits in Ghana through controlling the production of chocolate. Shouldn't we be adding value to that cocoa in country, consuming it in country, and then also making it available globally? But there are challenges you probably never think of in this cocoa producing country. There's the melting heat, inconsistent electricity, and problems finding raw materials like sugar and milk. Still, Addison joins a handful of other small companies working to cultivate and profit from the growing taste for chocolate here. The prominent black leaders and Ghanaian independence figures featured on their bars are a reminder of the spirit and potential of this place. There's so much value here on the continent. Where there are problems, there are huge opportunities. And what we're doing at 57 is we've seen a problem with something as small as a cocoa bean and we've turned it into an opportunity.